booktube Lynette here and in this video I am going to talk to you about all the books that I managed to read in the month of July. July was my half okay month for me. I finished six books but I feel like it was a bit disjointed. I kind of lost the reading bug a little bit in July. I think I was just so tired from work I'd got to the point where I was starting to just be too tired to do anything when I got home from work so I was really only reading in my lunch break and maybe for 20 minutes or so. I did manage to read every day in July, which is something that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to read every single day, even if it's just for, for 10 minutes. So I did manage that. I didn't manage my whole TBR. There are four books from July's TBR that I didn't read. Two of those are from Romanceopoly, and two of those are the two books I was supposed to read for the in-depth read-along. So I didn't get to those this month, unfortunately, but I'm going to carry those forward and they will be part of my August TBR instead. So if you've watched my last couple of videos, you'll know that I have been talking about trying to diversify my reading. And in what, what I mean by that mainly is that I am trying to find books that have been written by authors of colour or are about people of colour. And the first book that I finished in July was one of those books that I'd set for myself, and that is The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. This is a book that has been on my radar since I was in my late teens. My sister had to re-watch the video, watch the adaptation of this, as part of her GCSE studies for her exams at the age of 16. And it was a film that really touched her and really affected her and she actually went out and bought a copy of the the video herself and then when we no longer had video players she replaced it with a dvd so it is one that she keeps it's one that she wants to share with her children when they're older it's a subject that she feels quite strongly about and quite rightly so uh the book is about Seely. And the book takes the format of letters that she is writing to God. They are basically diary format. And she's talking about her day and her week uh, in those letters. And Seely, unfortunately, uh, as a young woman, as a young girl, was raped repeatedly by her father. She had her children taken away from her. And then she was given over to another man to be married to. This man also abused her. And... Her sister left because of the attitude that Celie's husband took, because Celie's husband actually wanted to marry Celie's sister instead. And so her sister had to leave for her own safety. It's about Celie's journey to overcoming everything that life has thrown at her in her early years. It doesn't talk so much. The book is set during 1920s, 1930s America, when the oppression of people of colour was far more open than it, than it is these days. And it doesn't really, it does go into that in part, but Celie isn't directly affected by it. People in her life are affected by it. So it's all about how Celie pushes past everything that's being thrown her way to become a better person, to find happiness and how that all pans out in the end <laughs> I wouldn't say this is a book you enjoy it definitely is not a book you enjoy the subject matter uh, like I say it does talk about rape it does talk about uh, domestic violence it's not an easy subject matter to read about it does talk about racial aggression in part and it's not it's not an easy read I do recommend it we need to read about books like we need to read books like this we need to read books about our history because we need to learn from them so that we do not make the same mistakes in the future and i think that's what so profoundly affected my sister was was just that um obviously it, it was such a life lesson i do recommend it it's a history lesson for sure so get on and pick this up the second book was again another one on my journey to read more diversely and this book is A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. This book is about Naledi, who is a young black woman in America. 
and she is at uh, college, university, studying. She's in a graduate program, I think. I think she's in a postgraduate program and she's uh, in some kind of medical program to do with infectious diseases and tracing and identifying new infectious diseases. And she's been receiving these emails that she thinks are spam, but they're telling her that she is the betrothed, um, the long lost betrothed of a prince of an African country. And this is Prince Thabiso. Prince Thabiso is on his way to America for business when he's told by his aide that they have found uh, his betrothed and he decides that he wants to meet her. Unfortunately, a small mistake leads the lady to think that Prince Thabiso is someone else completely. Prince Thabiso uses this to his advantage to try and get to know the lady and unfortunately that causes some friction for them when she finds out that he has been lying about who he really is. It's then their journey to overcome that for the lady to forgive him and get past that. Uh, they go back to the African country that Thabiso is from because there is a new infectious disease there, which Naledi is then given the opportunity to work out what it is and work out how to stop it from spreading. And also Prince Thabiso takes her back as his betrothed because he doesn't want to marry the woman that his parents have chosen for him. And in fact, he has actually started falling in love with Naledi. It's a really great story. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun, I don't read a lot of royal romances. Um, I've read quite a few recently, in recent in in the last year or so, but uh, I don't normally read them. So it is good fun, and I did enjoy it. And I liked this idea that uh, the lady's got this whole background that she knows nothing about, even though she's grown up in America because she went there when she was a small child. She doesn't know anything about her African heritage, and it's the learning about that and learning about her family. And I really enjoyed it. And I do recommend it. And um, this is the first book in a series by Alyssa Cole. So I am looking forward to picking up more by her in future. So the third book that I finished in the month of July is The Chase by L. Kennedy. This book I didn't get on with quite so much. It's set in 18, 19 year old characters, Summer and Fitz. They're at college in America. They're thrown together because Summer needs somewhere to live and Fitz's house has a spare room and they know her older brother so she moves in with them but on a night out Summer hears Fitz talking about her and he's saying some not very nice things unfortunately she doesn't hear the context in which he's saying them and he's trying to convince himself that actually he doesn't need to get involved with Summer he sees Summer as a bit of a drama queen and he's a quiet reserved character and doesn't need the drama that comes with being involved with Summer. Unfortunately, Summer doesn't hear the good things that Fitz says about her, so this leads to tension between them. And obviously, eventually, they resolve the tension, something happens, the spark ignites, and they come together. And it's about how they reach their happy ever after from there. I, I didn't get on with it. I enjoyed it to a point. Um, I enjoyed the reading of it. I felt sometimes the characters were a bit too immature for me. I just wanted to give them a bit of a smack. Summer in particular was a bit whiny and whingy. Um, she wasn't the drama queen that Fitz made her out to be, but drama did follow her around. Um, but unfortunately, I think this is where it stops. I've read books by L. Kennedy before. I've really enjoyed them. They were more adult uh, romance, though, rather than new adult romance. So they were late 20s characters rather than late teens. So I don't think I'll continue on with this series, but I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars. If you like new adult romance, you probably would enjoy it. So the fourth and fifth books that I read in the month of July were the first two books in a series that my nephew has lent to me. And this series is the Secret Breakers series by H.L. Dennis. The first two books are The Power of Three and The Orphan of the Flames. And I read both of them in very quick succession in July. They are based around a group of young people that have been brought together to try and crack the code of a manuscript which no one has ever been able to read. This manuscript is a forbidden manuscript. No one is allowed to study it. And this leads to some danger for them. 
it is a book for children so the danger isn't really bad think think da vinci code but for children i really really enjoyed them i absolutely flew through the first two and i'm really looking forward to picking up the next ones i've already started the third one i just haven't finished it yet but i am really looking forward to reading those um the rest of those the uh premise of the story is that these children have codes to crack to try and read this manuscript. The first one, they are based around the Legends of Arthur, I think, and specifically a book written by Thomas Mallory and uh, something that's been written in one of those uh, Arthur legends that Thomas Mallory wrote. And the second book deals with the Enigma variations and codes in the music of those pieces written by Elgar and the the next four books follow a similar theme so i did really enjoy them like i say gave them, if you've got a child nine plus give them these books they are great they are absolutely brilliant i really enjoyed them like i say my nephew loved them which is why he passed them on to me and i'm hoping he recommends me more books in future and the final book that i finished in the month of july is dear edward by anne napolitano this was the book club pick for Just One More Page book club that I joined. It's a new book club. July was its official first month and this was our official first pick. This book is about a young boy, Edward, who boards a flight with his family to relocate across country. And during the flight, it crashes and Edward is the only survivor of the plane crash. And it's about how he recovers from that. It's not about his physical recovery. It's about his mental recovery. The first half of the book very definitely deals with the aftermath, the mental aftermath and how he was affected. And then the second half of the book deals with how he recovers from the mental distress that he's under. And part of that is when he finds bags of letters that have been written to him by the families of everyone else who was on board that plane. The story also doesn't immediately, in the first part of the story, it doesn't tell you how the plane crashed. That is actually part of the story as well. And you don't know how the plane came to crash until the end of it. So there are the timeline then is telling the story from the point of view of um, a handful of other uh, passengers on the plane and one of the crew members and then right towards the end obviously the the, the pilots of the plane and um, what happens in the in the build-up to the actual crash so it's not an easy read um i think she's done it well in the way that she's shown how he mentally is is so badly affected and also then how he then starts to recover from that and it does go the end does go into the the future a little bit for him but it does show that you can recover from these things and it's a book that you in you enjoy the experience of reading it rather than enjoying the content of it it is one that i would recommend and Yes, I, I gave it four stars, but I gave it four stars because I enjoyed being in the moment rather than actually the story itself. So, yes, I, I, I really did enjoy this one and I do recommend it if you if you like that sort of story. Like I say, it's not easy reading. Um, you do start out with them boarding the plane and then in the immediate aftermath of Edward and Edward being in the hospital and coming out of hospital and obviously knowing that his whole family have died. So... There is a lot there for Edward to overcome, but yes, give this one a go. That's it. That's all the books that I read in July. How did you get on in July? How's your reading going this year? Are you still being affected by lockdown? Are you having trouble reading? Are you in a slump? Are you finding that actually it's the best thing for your reading? I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment down below. If you like the video, please give it a like. And also, if um, please give me a subscribe and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.